today we're going to continue with our Kaji Kembo concepts. It's going to be part two. If you haven't seen part one, go ahead and find part one on YouTube. Look at that, and then this will pick up after that. I'm going to talk now about flow. Okay, flow is a word that most of the Kempo styles usually use to describe what we would say is a smooth transition instead of, let's say, something that's straight linear and jerky. Okay, flow would be more circular and then you wouldn't see breaks and readjustments and those type of things in a technique that flowed from beginning to end. Okay, in Kaji Kembo you're going to see that a lot because we're going to add different techniques from different systems into the actual defensive technique. So it may flow from a karate block to a Kempo type low kick to a judo throw. All those techniques are going to flow together. Also in Kaju Kempo, because of the combination of arts, they were done or combined together to where the technique flows from beginning to end and it's not an individual technique. In other words, when we say it's karate, judo, jiu-jitsu, kempo, Chinese boxing, it's not five or six different types of techniques. We won't be doing just all judo techniques, we won't be doing all jiu-jitsu techniques, we won't be doing all karate techniques. We'll be combining techniques from those systems together to make a complete self-defense combination. Say for Jiu-Jitsu, common, common joint lock in Jiu-Jitsu. See if it come up here. It's what they call kotogash, or basically an outward wrist lock. It's done in Judo, it's done in Jiu-Jitsu, and it's done in Aikido. And basically, it's basically an outward wrist lock. But when you see it done in Jiu-Jitsu, punch through. You see a transition of stances here, okay, Jiu-Jitsu, Aikido have different footwork than Karate does. So if I was to do it, let's say Jiu-Jitsu style, basically I would turn this way and what they would do here is they'd sit there and pop that elbow and try to dislocate the elbow before they continued with the technique. And then they'd step, rotate this way to do the throw or the takedown part of it. Okay, now that doesn't transition well into a Kung Fu or Karate stand-up type technique because the footwork is totally different. In Aikido, they would do real long footwork, pull this guy off balance, step, and then throw it down. And again, that type of footwork doesn't transition into adding karate strikes, kicks, or kung fu kicks and strikes. So let's say in Kaju Kembo, if he's kick, punching straight through, I would do that catch from a cap stance, which basically is very common to karate and kung fu systems. Then all I'd have to do is twist or pivot the feet, twist the hips into the lock. Okay? Now, if he goes down, that's great. So, but if he doesn't, I'm going to take him in the groin and facilitate his going down. Because first thing he's going to do, as soon as I grab his arm, he's going to resist. He's not going to want to go down, so I'm in a position to soften the body up, take his mind off of this part here, and take him down. Or even just weaken or break down the body. Let's say if I kick the inside of the knee. Two things we do. If he steps forward in a punch, like a right cross, the groin is open for that kick. Okay, if he steps forward like in a knife attack, this foot comes forward, then the knee is open for that kick. Okay? So that's how we transition. Let's say a jujitsu lock with the karate kick and still do it as a stand-up technique. Come through. And 
then from there, you can go into groundwork or ground striking. We'll do that. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Let's say we want to do judo throws. Technically, a judo throw, if he threw a punch through. Judo guys are going to practice the way karate guys practice. When they throw a, a punch, they're going to step through and punch. Aikido guys are going to step through and do a downward strike. Like you, basically I call it a tomahawk strike, but basically what it is is it's imitating a downward sword strike. So you see Aikido people coming in and tapping like that. Judo people, same thing, they'll come through like a karate punch, a traditional karate punch, and step through, lunge punch to the center of your body. Okay? Most of the kind of people won't do that. They'll do a boxer's punch. Okay, so transitioning a judo shoulder throw into a stand-up Kaji Kembo technique. Okay? So let's say if someone punches, like a fighter's going to punch in the street, or he's going to be here and just be exchanging punches. He comes in like that. The block from the strike. Strike here. And then, this is my self for the judo throw. Okay. So again, your transition block strike, another strike, shoulder throw, and then at the bottom of this location. Okay, so you're going to see technique, basically a basic karate block, karate or kempo strike, forearm strike, judo throw, down at the bottom we go back into what we talked about, the first segment, limb destruction. Okay, we're going to finish the technique off by destroying that limb. Okay, talking about transitions, we're going to talk about throws and takedowns, and those type of things. We'll pick up on that a little bit later, probably in another segment. Right now, we're going to talk about how hand techniques transition, okay, or flow. Again, when I say flow, I mean smooth. I mean, you know, motion that basically it doesn't look like there's a whole lot of readjustment to make each technique work. Okay, see, put step on this side. Let's say, he throws a combination punch. He throws a right cross, he throws a hook punch. Here, here. Okay? Now, what I'm doing is I'm doing a brush block, and I'm doing an outward block at the same time. Another important thing you're going to do is you're going to check. Whatever opening you create on your body, you're going to cover that with a check hand or a palm. Okay, but when I do this here, what's going to flow from there is downward hammer fist, low hammer fist, uppercut, palm, punch, throw. Okay, you can see I didn't really have to readjust my body or my footsteps, footwork, whatever you want to call it. I didn't really have to adjust a lot of things to make it happen. I'm already here. So all I have to do is continue this motion, turn it here, adjust there, here, or fade either one, here. He's going to get a little bit farther out now, so I'm going to do a kick. You do a little faster, and basically, there was not a whole lot of adjustment to be done. Okay, every time you readjust yourself, you're opening up for his counterattack. When you do repetition, what we call repetitive striking, not doing the same thing over and over and over again. Basically, we call it repetitive striking because there's several strikes going on without a pause, but they're different strikes. We call that repetition in Kaji Kembo. Okay, when you do repetition like that, you're basically not pausing or stopping between each movement. Okay, you're trying to overwhelm the person. Okay, it's not the one punch knockout theory. It's to hit them as many times as you can theory, overwhelm them, don't give them the opportunity to counter or even recover from what you're doing. 